Cruising begins with a dream. Dreams become plans. Plans turn into goals. And with luck and hard work, we live the dream. Chance of showers Friday looks to be kind of dry. And with that, I announced that after five yes. years and a couple thousand forecasts, this is my last night at KNTV. Yeah, gonna, we're going to miss you. Going to spread my wings a little bit. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. just making us all jealous is Take what he's doing. Time. I'm actually going to uh, live a, a lifelong dream, which is to go sail over the horizon and check out some <gasps> distant ports of call. But this is not it for me. I'll be back someday, and I'll be back to share those stories with you. And enjoy it all and send us emails about your adventures. I will, sir. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm a little nervous. I know. Performance yeah. anxiety. No, young man. gonna be the biggest rays I have ever seen. This boat is 12 feet long. I'd say with the tail, there was a couple that, that were 12 feet long. And there were like 30 of them. I think they were like schooling or mating or something. something. So cool. We interrupted them. Yeah, I think because there's no boats here, they're like just able to thrive. <laughs> It sort of feels like we're the last people on Earth. It's really strange. It's eerily quiet. The Bahamas are a special place, but not just because of the beautiful blue water and white sandy beaches. Geologically and geographically, the Bahamas are quite unique. The 700 or so islands are a raised shelf of limestone that formed very, very slowly over the last 200 million years which actually makes it quite young. The limestone grew under a shallow sea as coral and tiny little shellfish lived and died and fell to the shallow bottom. Layer after layer slowly compressed into the limestone, which is very pure. You definitely do not want to fall. God, I hope I don't jinx myself. You do not want to fall on these rocks. The exposed limestone of the islands is extremely sharp and porous. This is because rainwater is naturally a little acidic. Pollution makes it even more acidic. The rain slowly dissolves the rock from above. The relentless ocean continually wears away at the rock, helping to form the beautiful beaches. Oh, lots of trouble getting this video uploaded. I think we're on the verge of not having any coverage, so I'm going to hoist our cell phone up the mast. Maybe that little extra height will get us over the hill and get the signal to the interwebs. <laughs> what we do to get these videos uploaded. <laughs> Does it get any quieter than this? No. Table for one. This is my most epic cup of coffee ever. <laughs> Lee Stocking, Williams Bay, delivers once again. 
Not sure what we're going to do tomorrow. We may head out. Head north. We'll see. Check the weather. I was just making lasagna when I saw this huge dolphin jump right outside of our boat. He's ch chasing fish. <gasps> He's huge. And there were a couple of them out there fishing, just darting. I've never seen one just jump in the air that fast. And you could see the fish he was chasing. It was crazy. Oh, it's a beautiful stay here, Williams and Lee Stocking Island. But it's time to hit the road, as they say. We are uh, sailing out through the cut here in the next few minutes. It's creeping up to about 11 knots right now. Directly downwind. It's kind of a tough direction for uh, for the catamaran, unless you got the spinnaker out. But I think we're not going to be out sailing long enough to get that going, so Let's stick with the head sail and the main. When we first took off in uh, 2002 on the first cruising boat, uh, of course, there wasn't any YouTube. But there was this magazine, the West Coast Sailing Rag, called Latitude 38. And their, um, their subtitle or, or their catchphrase, whatever, on the front of the magazine was, We Go Where the Wind Blows. And uh, it's interesting over the years how that phrase has really become important. Because, you know, we have plans and ideas about where to go and what to do and on what day and how long it's going to take to get there. But the truth is that it makes a lot more sense to just go with the wind. And that's what we're doing today. We didn't have a particular plan, but we, we have a, a south to southwest wind ahead of a cold front and it's not particularly strong. So um, we're just kind of going with it. And we're gonna see how far we can get today. Well, we're just bringing in the jib so that we can slow our roll. We got the tide still coming out and uh, we only have 4.5 miles to go to the big majors. We're gonna try to get our secret spot for the westerly coming in. Here she comes, here she comes, here she comes. Woo -hoo. I feel some raindrops. I'm gonna go check on the anchor. So far, no sound of thunder. Our streak continues. Uh, it's a pretty decent cold front, but it's, it's not compact. So since it's not all gonna come in at once, I don't think it's going to be uh, super duper wicked strong, but there we go. There's the gust front. We needed a boat wash. Is that it? And this girl, she's on fire. She's editing. And then, what is this? Oh my, it's post-it notes. Oh, we have turned a corner. Good job. And I made you breakfast in bed. Oh, <laughs> did she make breakfast? And I'm defrosting the freezer <laughs> on schedule. And I'm about to be done for the day. You know I mean? No, I might get started on that paddleboard cover. Oh, good. While you start editing. Oh, great. For the past few years, we've stored our inflatable paddle boards up in the forward locker, which means every time we want to use them, we have to inflate them, which really means we didn't use them that often. Now that they're back here, we use them all the time. They're pretty tough, they're Hypalon, but there's a lot of sun and we wanna protect them so they'll last longer. Today I'm gonna to make a cover using some scraps of Sumbrella and some other fabric that I'm no longer using. Okay, this is a little backstory. This fabric is actually from our first cruise on low pressure. I was gonna make flags wherever we went out of this fabric. <laughs> then I took that fabric and made an awning for our last truck. Megan's awning design is awesome. We can move it around and get shade whenever we need it. What do you think, sugar? Pretty nice, eh? We are all about the recycling. 
Find clarity. Repurposing. How's my little mad scientist doing? All I know is I'm hearing some, uh, some... Some singing? Yeah, some... Who, who, who okay, are we're listening, listening to? to Jeff Buckley, Hallelujah. Almost done. Joey is my mom's mom, says my grandmother. I loved her, and now I get to see her name every day. Show us how it's done. Watch me fall. <laughs> Sometimes it just feels good to get off the boat for the afternoon workout. I'll be feeling those lunges tomorrow. Next week in our multi-part series on preparing to go cruising, we talk fitness. This week though, tools. All right, starting with the most important things first, whatever the project is, you don't want to make a mess. So one of the most valuable pieces of equipment on this boat in terms of tools is a drop cloth, followed closely by my favorites, the paper towels. And not just any paper towels, these paper towels. I don't know what they're called, if they're from a shop, mechanic towels, whatever, the industrial strength, blue towels should be part of your kit. Safety comes in many forms. It takes on a whole new meaning when you're on a boat. If you got an injury, especially a bad one, you'd be in tough, tough shape. So, respirator for all those fumes and dust particles. Eye protection. Megan calls these my Dwight Schrute glasses. I'm not sure. Gloves and uh, shop gloves, something that'll withstand a little bit of abrasion. I uh, can't find them just in a second, but you should also get some neoprene gloves. <laughs> we have one neoprene glove. Mom, send neoprene Where gloves. Where the other one go? Your regular uh, rubber gloves will not stand up to the harsh, harsh chemicals, the acids, the solvents like acetone. They will just get dissolved. First thing I'm going to show you is my day-to-day -day go bag. This is soft, it's flexible and I can just grab it and go for all those little itty bitty jobs. I was kind of embarrassed to even show you what's in the go bag. Uh, I felt like I had to clean it up first before I showed it to you. Tools that get used get kind of beat up. All right, so just the usual stuff in my to-go bag. I've got spanners, I've got vice grips, I've got channel locks, I've got pliers, I've got uh, crescent wrenches, I've got the selection of screwdrivers. And one thing you might be noticing is that I've got duplicates of some things. That I typically have one good set and one not so good set. So here's the newer one that's sharper, here's the older one that's chipped up. Same goes for my screwdrivers. I've got the cheapy older one that's kind of chipped here and there, and then I've got the snap-on tool that I'm not gonna pry anything with. I'm gonna keep this one pristine as long as I can. A uh, couple tools that I think are a little bit unique and worth pointing out. First of all, this little pick set from Snap-on. You can see these little, little hooky dookies and I don't know what you'd call them, little pry thingies. Uh, this is just invaluable for getting into an electrical terminal and scraping off some corrosion or bending something out that needs to be bent out, snagging a little piece of line that needs to come through a hole. Also want to show you, I've got a very small socket set, but I use this thing all the time. All right, let's say that things are getting a little more serious. Now we get the tool box out. This is where I've got a few basic materials to work with. I've got two trays full of uh, nuts, bolts, and washers. And I've also got a little bit more specialty tools. This includes a full set of Allen wrenches, a couple of saws. I've got a hacksaw, anti-corrosion stuff that goes on electrical. I've got a couple of taps. I've got a quarter 20 tap and a 1022 tap. Also, I have a rivet gun. So that's very useful for installing things on aluminum. And some basic electrical uh, connection and troubleshooting things like a digital multimeter, which is just invaluable to have on a boat, as some little basic electrical connectors and some shrink wrap stuff. 
Sticking with the relatively boring, of course you gotta have it on a boat, Nick. What are you even going over this for? Is a standard socket and spanner set that you can pick up from pretty much any large hardware store. I'm just gonna put a couple of additions on there that you probably wanna think about having. First of all, a torque wrench of some sort. Uh, there's a lot of things on the motors, the props, the sail drives, where they specify how many foot pounds or newton meters that you need to torque that nut or that bolt, and you really should be measuring it out. And this is your standard pulley pulling kit. So I use these on the engines uh, to pull off the pulley that drives the belt for the water pump and the um, alternator. If you have a specialized prop puller, you also want to get something uh, for that as well. All right, now we're getting serious. I want to tell you about uh, the power tools that I keep on board. First of all, you got your basic cordless drill. And of course you got the bits and the drivers, but have you had one of these? This is a little grinding wheel. You would be surprised how often you need to fare something or clean something or otherwise grind at it. Get one of these. But if that won't do the trick, you need to get more serious. Every boat owner needs to have some sort of grinder on their boat, in my opinion. This is a sanding disc, but also using cutoff wheels. This is so useful. In a pinch, you can cut rigging, pipe, stainless pieces, aluminum. I fabricated basically the entire solar arch support system on this boat using pretty much this and a hacksaw. Very, very useful. When it comes to uh, grinders though, it's really the attachments that you have to go with it. So I mentioned the cutoff wheel, different sanding discs. Uh, this is a 40 grit. I've got 80, I've got 120. The trusty Roto Zip. Now this used to be a favorite of mine and I've done a few projects using it. I'm less and less a fan of this. First of all, it's super duper hard to control. So you have this vision for this perfect little piece of Lexan or plastic or something like that. And you've got it all measured out perfectly and then you hit it with this and it just jumps all over the place. This probably won't survive the next time we uh, get stuff off the boat, but a roto zip, depending on your skills, could be pretty handy. Instead of the roto zip, here's what I'm using these days. This is just your standard orbital jigsaw. Uh, this one is Chicago Electric. You tool mavens know that this is from Harbor Freight. These don't last very long. If you've got a lot of boat projects to do, you got a fixer upper boat, go ahead and invest in the Makita or the DeWalt, something better than this. Harbor Freight, they shouldn't even have Harbor in their name. A polisher, a buffer, kind of boring, but well, it's really nice to have. I've tried the orbital type buffers and they just, well, they suck. This is what you need. Not really a power tool, but since we're talking about cutting things, uh, this is a manual miter box. And you know, I've done so many little projects here where cutting just a, a perfect angle was important and I didn't want to make a huge mess. You need to have a variety of zip ties. You can't have enough tape on board. Duct tape, insulating tape, Gorilla tape, uh, electrical tape, it just goes on and on and on and they each have a specific use. I don't know what this box was used for originally, but this is now my sticky stuff box. And the reason for that is probably not very apparent on the video, but the fumes that are coming out of here are, they're strong. Uh, this is all of our different types of silicon and two-part epoxy and JB weld and life caulk and the uh, super glue to the underwater weld, liquid electrical tape, gasket maker. Uh, you could really do a whole video on the different types of applications, but I keep it all sealed up in one box so it lasts longer and does not smell so much. Some people call this a tool, some people won't call it a tool. This is D-Bond. And if you've ever needed to take apart something that's been fixed together with 3M5200 or 4000, something really, really strong, 
This will help to dissolve it. Sand paper and you want to have a variety of grits from uh, 60 grit sanding discs. I believe this is 180, we got 120, 200, 600, all the way up to some 2000 grit sandpaper. And they've each got their use. There's nothing worse than trying to use the wrong grit sandpaper. It either takes too long or it scars up whatever you're trying to work on. Also falling into the not very sexy but absolutely important category of tools on board, that's the brushes and the rollers. You want to have the right tool for the job. Uh, there's nothing worse than having to apply a really, really nice paint with some crappy disposable brushes. In other cases where you're putting on some sort of solvent or a degreaser or something that just doesn't need a fine brush, there's no need to use a horsehair when you can just use something that costs 30 cents. Well, that was embarrassing for me. Can you redeem us? I hope so. I had got all organized to show you all of my sewing treats. Okay, so let's start with this box, which I've had for 20 years. And it's really cool because it's got two sides. This has all of our grommets. And on the other side, I've got all kinds of snap-ons, um, clasps, things like that. And then also my grommet set. This in here is a sewing awl. And this makes a locking stitch on leather, canvas, something where you can't get your sewing machine to it. A medieval torture device. And this is what? It's for making grommets. You make grommets? Yeah. All right, webbing. So I've got black, white, Velcro. Oh, uh, you cannot have enough Velcro on board. This is so helpful for making cushions or attaching anything. I also have some shock cord. Zippers. Zippers are great for making cushions or making clothing or any kind of specialty bags. I also have, this is uh, basting tape, double-sided tape. So when you're attaching something before you sew it, you don't want it to slip. I also keep all of my thread in here. I have enough thread for five more boats. You think about five more boats? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and finally, my little sail repair kit. I've got this sail repair tape for the spinnaker, and then this can be used on the mainsail or the jib. In here, I've got all of my heavy duty thread, my palm, and my needles. Oh, this thing is heavy. I think it weighs 50 pounds. <laughs> This is the big guns. I feel like this is my best friend that I've had for 19 years. We go everywhere together. I'm jealous. We've been on planes, ships, trains together, and I've actually even dropped her once or twice. Didn't notice. So, <laughs> she is uh, she's a little battered, but she works just as well as she did the first day I got her. Huh. I've made at least nine sets of cushions uh, and multiple awnings. I highly recommend the Sailrite LSZ1. Not that I have too much time these days for sewing clothing and other personal items, but this is a serger. An edge of a, a fabric finishes it, tightens it up so no threads are gonna shred. So serger is kind of a fun thing to have. And then this little thing, I picked up at a sewing machine repair shop for $75. So this I can use for making any kind of clothing or light fabric type of uh, items. Stupid question. Why can't you make clothing and other kind of items with that thing? That's not a stupid question. I get that all the time. The reason is this thread is so thick and this uh, foot, everything in this is so heavy duty that the delicate fabric, it just ruins it, honestly. It's too, it's too heavy. Too strong. Too strong. We go where the wind blows. You gotta just go with the flow, even when it's hard and you wanna make plans. Right, uh, you gotta have plans to get yourself in a direction. Then you have to be ready to just completely abandon the plans and go where the wind blows. We like to say it will all become obvious. Thanks for watching everybody.
I hope this little mini series of what you can be doing now before you even go cruising is helpful. Yeah, talking fitness next week. It's kind of two part, eating healthy, but also getting exercise. So lots to chomp on next week. As always, a huge thank you to our patrons. You guys are helping make this show possible. If you are a patron, stick around. We've got some behind the scenes scenes that didn't make it this week. More scenes coming your way. Talk to you next week.